Hello everybody, uh, my name is Josh Mills. Um, I'm, I'm really excited that I got the opportunity from Backcountry Hunters and Anglers to join everybody uh, and do this Friday Night Tides. And um, I live in Spokane, Washington. I hunt and fish around the Northwest as much as I can. I'm a steelhead junkie, uh, but also I just love to tie bugs. I think it's, it's super fun. And especially when we have all this extra time on our hands right now, um, it's, it's, it's a time to try and, and, and try some new stuff. I tie a pile of different, like, let me grab this over here. I tie a lot of steelhead traditional type stuff, but let's get a little funky today, funky tonight here. And, um, let's try, let's try something a little weird. And I think one of the things with, with fly tying is, is that you get a chance to be innovative and, and pick up materials around you from the natural world. And um, I picked up on something a while back that I think could be really, really fun, and I'm, I'm, I'm excited to start testing these things. Uh, I caught wind of years ago of um, guys and gals in the Pacific Northwest, uh, namely in the Puget Sound, taking bones from salmon and making them into poppers for coho and sea run cutthroat and other things like that. So uh, I kind of got to thinking, and I was on a fishing trip in Oregon, and I found some salmon bones. And if, lo and behold, if you look at these things, they are the perfect popper uh, in the way that they um, in the way that they um, come through the water. They can scoop really well, and I can. I'm actually this is tied specifically for bass, um, but anything out there that takes a bug on the, off the top that you can you can chug across the top, uh, I think can be really fun. Like for instance, here's another one right here. I actually used a walleye bone, uh, walleye ver vertebrae to do this. Um, it, it's just something a little different, and I'd like to show you a little bit more. And we're going to up our game a little bit more for this fun time. I had a friend in Alaska named Rick Matney uh, send me some halibut bones, halibut vertebrae, and they are massive. So I'm tying this specifically, and I think this will be really good for uh, something in the toothy variety, like a muskie or a um, or a pike or big bass or something like that. So what we're going to go for today is I don't even know what the hell I'm calling this yet, but if you can see this, it's a big old vertebrae from a halibut and the construction of this is on a tube fly and uh, on a tube system so maybe you'll, you'll learn a little bit more about that uh, it's not that hard to tie to be honest with you um, the first is, the first thing you got to do is you got to procure some uh, different bones if you will and um, one thing to notice about these is um, they're going to come with quite a bit of extra accoutrement on it. <laughs> the, uh, the rib bones that stick out, you're going you're gonna to pop those off. And then also, if you can see, a lot of this extra stuff, you're going to want to get rid of that. And uh, I've already prepped one up here. And so now we are good to go. The second thing is, is just go grab, your, grab yourself a power drill and a real fine uh, um, drill bit and, and uh, drill yourself a hole right there. And that'll allow it to be inserted on the tube. Um, next, next up, you're going to want to get some tubes, and and also, so this thing right here is a uh, Pro Tube uh, flexi needle, and it is uh, the bomb.com for me uh, in terms of uh, tying on tubes. Uh, makes it a lot easier. I actually use this almost all the time for most of my steelhead flies, uh, intruders, leeches, different things like that. Uh, so the first thing you're going to do is, is you're going to cut your, your section of tube real quick and then I throw a little bit of fire on the end of one end because that creates a little bit of a flare out because what you got to do is you got to go and you got to insert some junction tubing as a place for the hook to uh, be ready and waiting. <laughs> so you're going to end up something like, like that right there and I've ex purposely extended this one because this is a big arse fly. If I can get this to go into my tube adapter. I've used so much glue in the last couple weeks that I gotta, I gotta fix that. It doesn't wanna go on very well because there's a lot of extra glue on there. My apologies. So, now uh, I'm tying with uh, a little th thong stronger, thicker thread. It's called Vivas and I'm tying it in eight aught because you can just absolutely crank on this stuff and that's what we're gonna end up doing right now. So we're just gonna lay a thread base down. And especially with these flies that are meant to just trigger a reaction bite, there's not a lot, there's not a lot of cutesy in this fly by any stretch of the imagination. It is, it is get noticed 
and get hit. So I'm gonna grab some additional flash because flash always works in flies. <laughs> when in doubt, add more flash. And this is gonna be kind of part of the tail system right here. I wouldn't really call it, maybe not a tail, let's call it more of the end of the fly. But um, this part swims really, really well. So we're just gonna, you know, I don't know, three inches maybe. And I'm gonna lash that guy down right there. Cut off the excess. And then as you can see on this other fly, the other thing that I've done is I put a bunch of hackle tips in here because these things just A, can create contrast and they flow really well in the water. And of course, no good fly tying area is, 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 is properly used if uh, you can't find half the stuff you're looking for, even though you've pr I've prepped for this specifically. I've also got some of this barred predator wrap type stuff. Uh, I don't remember who makes this. It's awesome. It just creates, again, you're looking for more contrast because I think fish are, are, are not necessarily inspecting, but I think these uh, variations in contrast to um, the fly will just add more uh, visual purdiness for the fish to come get it. Hope everybody's doing out okay out there during this weird time, but uh, at least we've we've got some opportunities like this to sit around and uh, try to innovate and figure out new stuff with fly time, and that's that's super fun to me. I, I, I dig it a lot. So also, I'm going to throw a little bit on the bottom here to add a little bit more. So I'm going to flip the vise and just throw a little bit extra on there. So again, we're starting to get a bit of a bait fish profile, if you will. Okay, so I'm just, I don't want everything to be the same length, but I just kind of approximately want to be there. Okay, now I'm going to start throwing on some some hackle. I've just got some some standard, uh, I, don't, I don't know what that is, some sort of uh, rooster neck right there. So I want this just to be able to kind of kick out the back. And a lot of these things will pair up for you. You just got to spend a little time with the cape and figure out who goes with who. Because each one has a concave and and you want it, you want it to try to marry together in some respects. But again, this is a reaction bite. Um, so they're not they're not going, oh, it doesn't it doesn't match properly. So I'm not gonna eat it. That's not gonna that's not what's gonna happen. Okay, so we're gonna bind those in a little bit because I think also, you know, if you can add more buoyant materials to this, um, uh, like extra chicken feathers and stuff, uh, it's not a bad thing because uh, the bone that we're gonna be working with, it's heavy. So, yeah. Okay, so at this point, um, I think I'm gonna, I'm gonna throw a couple of blue tips on the back, maybe just one, to add a little bit more color contrast. In bulk. Nope. Yep. And the beautiful thing, um, so if you're starting to tie out there or if you're just kind of getting a little farther along, um, one of the things that will help separate your skills, maybe not separate, but give you a lot more advantage, is a is, is, a, is a good vice. So I, I use this old Regal that I have. It's kind of my tried and true. But I've noticed a lot of friends um, really advance their fly tying skills uh, by just simply changing their vise and getting something that has a rotary function and allows you to look at all angles of the fly. I'm sorry for the squeaky vise. I even put some gun oil on that. It still doesn't want to do what I want it to do. Okay, next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add some foam. And I've got two layers here. And all I'm going to be doing is sandwiching this on top of the... Um, on top of the fly and I'm going to throw the black on top because for no real reason I don't really know but just because and then I'm going to flip it over and give it another layer of foam on the bottom so we're kicking these out the back because we're going to be folding them over and again this is not something that's going to win any beauty awards but I think it's going to rip across the water. And the other thing about this is just that, that may be uh, pretty obvious to anybody. Um, but with, when you're running this kind of fly, uh, you're going to be running at least probably an 8, 9, or 10 weight. Because you're going for the big uh, big fish. And you got to be able to turn this big bugger over. And this is not something for a 9 foot 5 weight. Okay. So now at this point, I'm just going to sandwich these over. And oh, one other thing is that I noticed 
is I want this foam to be back to the butt, if you will. So it gives us <clears throat> a little more flotation. And doesn't I, th I think it looks a little worse if you don't go all the way back to this portion right here. So the first thing I'm going to do is drop the top on that. And then I'm going to flip it and put the bottom on it. Couple of more wraps on here. Kind of some, gonna get it into its place. So now you've got yourself, you're starting to get kind of almost like a wog uh, or a, or a, or a um, uh, I think they're called wogs or uh, the, the coho fly that a lot of people use up in Alaska or other places that they can get silvers on the top. So I'm just gonna take that excess off and, and, and pull it back. And I'm gonna cinch this in because and uh, nothing worse than breaking your foam off. But um, now here's something I'm going to do, and I think it's just more of wind resistance issue, um, because again, you're you're tossing something that weighs a pound. Um, I'm just going to lash the uh, foam down because at this point, I think it uh, is going to create a little less wind resistance, and it doesn't look all super pretty and everything like that. But um, I think it's going to be a lot more durable because if that foam gets an edge on it, it it'll it'll start ripping, and um, no thank you. <laughs> so um, then I'm gonna come in, and, and in this situation, um, let me see what my order here is. Yes, so now I'm gonna go back to some of the flash uh, that I have, and add another layer of flash over the top and on the bottom, and then um, we're gonna re repeat the hackles. Actually, I'm just going to do this off the side here. So I'm, again, dropping it off the side. So more, um, it's going to pulse a little bit more in the water and gives it more life and action. Hope everybody is, uh, is anybody out going out turkey hunting yet? I've got one. A couple of days ago, I was pretty excited about the state of Washington had us on a pretty severe restriction for a while. Now, uh, thankfully, we can go out and recreate and be outside and enjoy our public lands and and do the things that we love. So that's really awesome. And was able to call a turkey in the other day. And I actually looked at some of the neck bones and went, hmm, because uh, birds have, of course, hollow bone structure. And I was thinking, maybe that'll add a little more buoyancy. But I forgot to do it. Okay, now we're gonna come back on the uh, the hackle, and I'm gonna cut a few more pieces off here, off this big cape that I've got here. Yeah, it's kind of funny. Somebody asked me one time, uh, "Do you save money by fly tying?" And I'm, no, no, you end up spending way more money, just due to the fact that you just you end up getting uh, a little bit of gearitis, and you want all the things that you think will work. <laughs> And then you end up buying 10 of these and all this other stuff. And you'll never tie enough flies to be at the scale to uh, save money, ever. Um, uh, maybe if you're a commercial tire. But even then, um, you're not in it for fun to save money. So, you know, we're just kind of creating a second layer right here. If you can kind of see. It. Again, it's not going to win any beauty contest. This is just form and flow right here. Cut those extra tips off. Now I'm going to throw some more blue on. Kind of just repeating uh, the process. I learned that kind of, that, that, that process from tying a lot of intruders. Because a lot of times you're just tying in stages. And, um, and repeating processes. Okay. So now we've got to, yeah, we're, we're kind of right, getting right where we want to go. And the next layer that I'm going to throw on this is a deer hair collar and spin it almost like a muddler head. And this is again adding a little more pop and buoyancy and keep this, this thing afloat a little bit more. Of course, nothing helps a little bit more than just adding a little bit of uh, dry fly floating on top of something like this as well. So that'll help it out. Um, I'm looking for my... See, I got a big pile of junk over here. Anyways, one of the things with with deer hair you want to you want to be um, aware of is, or elk hair or anything like that, is that they always come with a, a, quite a bit of guard hair between the big stuff. So I actually have a cat brush around here somewhere in my. Oh, there it is. This is a little fly tying hack for you right here. 
uh, 99 cent store. I had this uh, uh, cat brush and it, it pulls all the guard hairs out because guard hairs just soak up water. So at this point, I'm just going to drop this over the top here. Let me adjust my camera a little bit so we can get a little better viewpoint. So we're just gonna add this collar. So we're gonna do a soft wrap over the top, kind of seat it ever so slightly, maybe one a little bit more firm so you get almost in a area you wanna go. And then I take my thumb and forefinger and just start working that stuff around. And so you get an even distribution and then you can spin it like a normal deer hair situation. And then I'm just looking for somewhat even coverage at this point, because we're gonna roll the butts, the, the tips or butts back at this point and create a thread dam there so it flares them back. And then we're gonna come in with our skizzers and cut the majority of the butts off to create essentially a muddler head. And at this point, I believe this fly would fish too and do no problem. And I probably, if, if I was just gonna run this without the, the, the halibut vertebrae, I would at this point make a much bigger muddler head to, to be the, the water deflector, if you will. Because the, the, the deer here is gonna be buoyant and wanna stay on top of the water. And especially with the foam, it's gonna do that. But we're just adding another layer of buoyancy at this point. And uh, I'm just kind of moving around and then grabbing some of these hackle tips, or not hackle tips, um, the tips of the, uh, the deer hair, the spun deer hair, and getting them out of the way because aesthetically not the greatest. Okay, now here's the fun part. Um, so we're gonna grab our whip finish tool and throw a bunch of whip finishes on this to finish off the thread portion of this. And again, this is not gonna be the pretty area right now, so you, I just throw a pile in there because, oh God, there's nothing worse than having a, fret, a, a fly unbind on you. No fun. Okay, and uh, no fly tying bench is ever complete without some super glue. And now hopefully I've got it it's open. And I'm gonna come down and lay a pretty liberal dosing on the tube itself. Again, sorry for my squeaky vice. I thought I had that dialed when I put some uh, gun oil on it, but I think I need to get in there a little bit more. Okay, so now we've got a pretty good uh, drop there, and then I'm gonna come to the, the hole on the vertebrae and actually add a little bit as well, because this is how we're gonna keep her all together. And one thing you'll notice on these bones, they're gonna have, one's gonna, one side's gonna be a little bigger and have a little flat, so then you just kinda wanna orientate this guy uh, to give you the proper uh, sit on the fly. Okay. And then just hold it for a little bit. So now we're, we're getting to the point where we're, we're, we're almost done here. Excuse me. <laughs> Actually, uh, one of the other tips on this is, and I almost did this too much, is <clears throat> when these vertebrae uh, first come out um, of the fish and you and one of the things you can boil them uh, to get them or maybe, and yeah, I got, I'm kind of researching ways to um, try to dehydrate them a little bit to take some of the moisture out of them. Um, <laughs> I actually put these on the trigger <laughs> and uh, for about half an hour at 180 degrees because all I wanted to do is just try to get out um, because I was actually tying some of these the other day and um, I tied a few pre, um, uh, before I, before I dehydrated them and um, they weigh a lot. They're very heavy. So this thing is, is stuck tight on there now. And uh, I've got to clean that needle. Holy moly. Okay. Okay. And now there's just a couple quick steps left. So now you're left with some extra um, tube sitting out there and that's not really what you want to work with. So I'm just going to take my scissors and get in there as best I possibly can. And, and cut out as much as, as you can. And at, at last thing, last step, um, is I'm gonna t hit the inside of this with some flame because what that ends up doing is it curls back the, the tube and provides another stop gap in case this ever gets loose from the uh, 
and I'm putting that back in there and just making sure that we have a clear path for the line to go down the tube. And um, boom, there we go. So again, these are some of the vertebrae uh, poppers that I've been messing with. And uh, I'm going to ship some of these back to some friends in the, in the Midwest who have a lot of musky and pike around them. Here's one uh, that I think is going to do well with bucktail. Um, and another one that I tied last night, another bucktail with a little more white. And then, of course, we've got this beauty right here. And with these tubes, all you have to do is you send the you send the line down this down this, and it comes out. And again, you've got your junction tubing right there. And I don't have the proper hook for it right now, but let's say this Daiichi was the right thing, but it's not. But it could. Um, you probably want one of these straight eyes that goes and it just sits in the junction tubing. and sits right there and it's ready to go. And the cool thing is, is that if a fish comes and gets it and then you're not, de you're not dealing with it, a lot of times it separates. So you're only fighting the fish on the hook and you have, and you have a lot more leverage. Um, I'm, I'm getting uh, some ideas as I think the Gamagatsu B10S would probably be the proper, um, the proper fl uh, hook for this. And there she is. So that's gonna be scooping across the water and hopefully some toothy critter comes and takes them home. So if anybody uh, wants uh, some more information on this, you can hit me up at Millsfly on Instagram or, uh, you know, I'm on Facebook at Josh Mills. Um, there's a couple of Josh Mills out there. It turns out it's a pretty common name. And uh, again, thank you to Backcountry Hunters and Anglers for uh, their uh, dedicated work to saving public lands, or not so much saving, but preserving and making sure they're for the next generation. And uh, thank you for the opportunity to tie with you guys tonight. And again, um, have a great day. And um, thank you. Bye-bye.